everyone, Miss Art here to give you my Naruto chapter 685 review. Uh, this week we got an early chapter uh, because next week the Shonen Jump volume is going to be published a day earlier. So thus we got our illegal scanlations a day earlier. And as you can tell, I'm doing a regular review this week as I have the time to do so. And it's kind of nice to do one again. I did stay up last night <laughs> for the new chapter. I think it released around like 1.30 a.m. again, my time. But there were some spoiler panels that got leaked about an hour before uh, the actual chapter released, which is usually how it works. And the fandom of a particular pairing just started to go nuts on Tumblr. Nuts! <laughs> I don't think I need to tell you which pairing. <laughs> that is. Getting into the review, this chapter is most exciting if you are a fan of pairings or getting into pairing wars. Otherwise, the action in this chapter did not present any real surprises. Or if you're a Sakura fan, you probably really like this chapter because she actually is able to do something. But breaking this chapter up, there are basically two main parts. The first part being Naruto versus Kaguya, and the second part being Operation Save Sasuke. Focusing in on the first part, this was definitely the most boring part of the chapter because it mostly consisted of five pages that flashbacked to the previous chapter. It was almost panel for panel, word for word, the scenes from the last chapter. And I understand Kishimoto uh, chose to do this in an effort to explain how Naruto was able to trick Kaguya in Black Zetsu and thus make an opening for Sakura and Obito to go save Sasuke. But the complexity of this operation, I don't believe, warranted five pages of flashback. Truly, it could probably have been condensed to a couple of panels of Obito explaining himself. And maybe the ones of Kaguya going, oh yeah, the real Naruto always has those spheres around him, duh. I'm really disappointed at what a dumb team Kaguya and Black Zetsu make. I mean, they're totally not intimidating right now. All they have going for them is that Kaguya is powerful. That's it. But with the closing of this first part of the chapter, we understand that Naruto's role now is to distract Kaguya long enough to give Obito and Sakura a chance to find Sasuke and bring him back. And that brings us to the second and infinitely more interesting part of this chapter, Operation Save Sasuke-kun! Like the first part of the chapter though, this second part is also pretty straightforward as we see Obito and Sakura putting their powers together in an effort to find Sasuke. And this is finally Sakura's time to be useful. I know Sakura fans are just going nuts. She gets a whole half chapter. And it's sad to say that is a lot of screen time that our main female character has gotten in a long time. And I say the focus of this chapter for fans is very much on pairings because first off, if you were a fan of Obito and Sakura together, then you got a lot of panel time between these two. There's a whole lot of bare hands on bare well-muscular, sweaty shoulders. I gotta give Sakura credit here with surrounding herself with Uchiha men. I respect that. But no, they are all about business. Sakura is giving her energy from her Hyakugo seal into Obito so he can continuously use his uh, Mangekyo Sharingan, his Kamui. Their first two goes at it aren't successful as they see the lava world again, and then they open up a portal to an acid sea, which inadvertently uh, spills acid on Sakura and burns her. But again, I gotta give Sakura credit here for reacting quickly when she got burnt uh, by both saving Obito and herself and by removing her flat jacket in order and her sleeve in order to stop the burning. So she's able to take the pain and then her determination gets a moment to shine when she refuses Obito's idea to take a little break. She realizes that Naruto is buying as much time as he can fighting against Kaguya so they need to work their hardest to find Sasuke. And find Sasuke they do and this is the highlight of tension in this chapter where we think Sasuke isn't going to be able to make it in time through the portal. Obito and Sakura fear the worst as they are no longer able to sustain the portal, only to find Sasuke has appeared behind them, 
using his new shushin uh, technique. And this marks the first time we get an actual explanation from Sasuke about this new technique of his. What he's actually doing is trading places with an object within a certain distance of himself. But this tension of Sasuke making it through the portal was definitely the best part of this chapter, and fans of Sasu Saku have been rejoicing all day over that panel of Sasuke catching Sakura, and then they're like making eyes at each other. They did that like two times. So there's a lot for that fandom to fawn over. So overall, Operation Sasuke is a success as we expected it to be, and Obito and Sakura are a little worse for the wear as Obito is just like bleeding profusely from the eyes it looks so painful and Sakura is so exhausted she collapsed basically if it wasn't for Sasuke but she still has her Hyakugo activated which you know knowing Tsunade as long as that's there she'll be fine but with so little chakra I'm not sure how much useful she's going to be for the rest of the series I guess we'll find out but stylistically I thought the way the portals opened um, was pretty nice they were almost like ripples like black holes uh, in the fabric of time and space. So stylistically that was nice, but why are most of the other dimensions Kaguya can access like such horrible worlds? Like who would want access to a lava world or a world of acid or a world of snow? Those are not places I would want to take a vacation at. And they're like castles in two of them. I wonder if we'll ever find out what's up with those castles. But overall, yeah, second part of this chapter, definitely the strongest. First part with that flashback definitely weakened the chapter. It was something we just had to work through because overall, this chapter did not present anything terribly new. We pretty much assumed what was going on with Naruto's clones. We didn't need those five pages of flashback to explain it. And we understood basically how Operation Save Sasuke was going to work. And uh, Sasuke's new power, even though we got an explanation here, I think most of us from the, the two times he's used it before could assume uh, what he was doing because he substituted himself with objects the previous two times so you could read into the situation. So yeah, overall nothing new in this chapter was presented and that leaves the door open for fans to focus on other things like pairings. Personally, I'm neutral to the pairings. I just think it's hilarious how half-naked Obito is the whole time. <laughs> so yeah, if you're a fan of Sakura, you probably like this chapter. Fan of Obito, you probably like this chapter. Fan of them together, you probably liked it. Or if you're a Sasu Saku fan, you love this chapter. But the quality of this chapter from a storytelling standpoint was weaker, primarily for the first half and that redundant flashback that we got. It's really up for the fans to take the parts they love in this chapter and run away with them and love the chapter for that reason. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought of this chapter as always in the comments below. It looks like we're gonna get a color page and some other colored material next week and a big announcement whatever that could mean. <laughs> Let me know what your thoughts are if you have an idea of what it might be about. And yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate your guys' support. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!